Hi, welcome to Politics NY with Sky. I'm filling in tonight for Sky, and I'm Steve Witt, the political editor-in-chief of Politics NY and Schneps Media. Schneps Media is the only media outlet providing a platform for every single New York City council candidate to have their voice heard and show their faces and personalities. This evening's debate is for Queen City Council Seat District 24. It's nice to meet you. You might have been familiar with Sky's three questions in three minutes series, where she's highlighted many of you. And for those of you who haven't been highlighted, please reach out and let's get your video scheduled. This week is the last week for that series of fun three minute interviews. Today's debate will be more like a discussion with only two of you, even more so, which makes it fast and fun. Every time you speak, please keep your responses short and sweet so we can facilitate conversation. This fun and fast form is being recorded so you can watch it on politicsny.com and see all of our debates scheduled and recordings on politicsny.com backslash debates. So welcome District 24, which covers the neighborhoods of Kew Gardens Hills, Pomonick, Elect Chester, Fresh Meadows, Hillcrest, Jamaica Estates, Briarwood, Parkway Village, Jamaica Hills, and Jamaica. We're going to start. We're going to start tonight's discussion with each candidate introducing themselves and telling you why you're the best person to represent the district and city government. Uh, let us start with Muhammad. Hello, very many everyone. My name is Mohammed Abdeen, and I live in this country almost 30 years and same neighborhood, Jamaica State, Jamaica Hill, or whatever this is, almost 30 years. So I live in this thing, east, west, north, and south. And when I come to this country, I never, I did not speak the language. I don't know, I did not know anyone. And so I work so hard. And I live this year, and I have three successful children who, live, who attend all history public school. And I was a shop steward for United Local 100. And I was also delivery for United Local 100 almost 20 years. And currently, I serve two non-profit organizations like Alliance of South Asian American Labor as the executive director of each of them, as a Bangladesh American Advocacy Group as a voting director. And I was a Queens County Judicial Delegate, Democratic Parties. Now I'm an alternate judicial delegate, Queens County Democratic Parties. Because I'm running this country, this uh, District 24, because my neighborhood fell so much behind, and a community activist. And community organizer, I want to give this community and this city like same fair share for everybody getting. If you live, if you know that like south side of the hill side, this immigrant people coming from all over the place, this is filthy, dirty, and we have a representation. Excuse and, me, uh, Mohammed, I'm sorry. If your son is there, I think it's a bad connection. And I'm having trouble hearing you. Uh, maybe you have to mute or somebody. Is, um, oh, I see. All right. Well, continue. Hopefully, I'm, I'm not sure why. Is okay now? I see you. Oh yeah. So I so I have met many things actually in this my community. When I was a I was a, like halal and kosher club and used to be public school and. It, Probably work and leader to bring in a little university public school. Also, we passed the religious garment for our men and women, all the you know, religious faith. And we bring to the Bangla language access in New York City. And that's why I have to serve the good community. I'm running for this district and represent this district. Thank you. Um, can you just mute, hit your mute, and well, uh, James Gennaro, you want to give your opening statement? Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, my name is Jim Gennaro. I'm currently the... Uh, am I coming through okay, Steve? You're coming in fine. Okay. And then we'll, we'll yeah. work on you, Mohammed. We'll get it. Sure, I see you, sure. you have a young assistant. With you. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, my name is Jim Gennaro. I currently serve as council member for the 24th district. I took office on February 18th. I was uh, sworn into office. I serve on nine committees of the New York City Council. I'm, I was uh, recently uh, elevated to chair of the Committee on Environmental Protection. 
since I've been on the council for eight or nine weeks, I have sponsored uh, you know, 21 pieces of legislation, uh, 15 of which have become uh, law. And I, um, and I, I, I have a long history of, uh, of, of serving the community. I was the council member from 2002 to 2012. I was the uh, member of, uh, of local community for eight for many years. I was president of the Jamaica States Association. And, um, uh, and some of my laws uh, have uh, shown national leadership and been picked up nationwide. Uh, and uh, I recently made some appointments to the community board. I uh, uh, put two very prominent South Asians on the local community board. I also put on uh, someone from the, you know, Pominock Houses, the chair, the, the, the chairman of the uh, um, Residents Association. There was no representation uh, on the uh, community board from the Pominock Houses. I made sure that they have, uh, you know, proper um, representation now. I was just at Pominock yesterday uh, in the upcoming budget. Uh, I'm going to multiply by five times the amount of money that goes to the Pominock Food Pantry and other food pantries around the district because the need is so great. And um, uh, I uh, <coughs> was, um, was pivotal in the passage of recent reform uh, legislation. I'm having difficulty hearing because of all the static. Why don't we just kind of leave it there for now and uh, have questions back and forth. But it's very difficult for me to hear with all the fuzziness in the background. Uh, thank you. I don't know. We're having some technical difficulties, uh, but we're definitely going to to uh, to uh, let, let's just. I think let's do this with a gallery view. This All right. So, uh, very first question: If if elected, what will be the number one issue that you're going to confront? Um, uh, let's start with Mohammed. My number one uh, problem is like um, with the education system is right now. It's like a remote learning, and our children and they are so much behind. And people are suffering now affordable housing, the housing problem between my community and and job. So this three issues I'm fighting for. Excuse me, uh, Mohammed, just to make this better, is there a way you can uh, disconnect and then reconnect? Because you're having a, a, a very difficult connection. Let me see one second. For the Zoom or? Uh, yeah, I believe it's the Zoom and then we have Okay. My apologies for that. No problem. Hello, James. Yes, I'm here. Oh, yeah. oh, sounds great now. Maybe when okay. it reconnects, it will be a, a better connection. Sure, sure. And uh, um, should I answer the question about my first priority? Uh, let, let's just wait a little bit. Oh, sure. have it. Let's just give okay. him another chance to read. Right. Sure. Right, still, still a lot of static there. It's okay. I, 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 I don't understand why. Well, I, have, I have no problem in here. I see him. He's okay. You, what, what's that? Since I have to mute you, I'll mute you. see if this. One minute, please. Yeah. Sure. Excuse me one minute here. It's so good. All right. He, he's on, ask to unmute it. Says I put him on mute. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. All right. But if he can't, let me ask him right now. All right. Thank you. Hi, my technical guy. Uh, Mohammed. Ask to unmute. 
Hello, Mohammed. Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear. I can hear you, but there's static. I wonder. Ask your son. Do you have another computer you can hook up from or from your phone? Yeah, I can do it for phone. You can use your phone to do it. Yeah. Hold on one second. Again, I'm sorry, James. Get a, a glass of water. Okay. Wendy, uh, say that my internet connection is uh, is uh, unstable. It could be a, it could be a bandwidth thing. Are you on the internet? I'm back. <clears throat> Great. Sorry for the technical difficulty. No, no, no. Sure. I just I just checked with my wife to see if our internet connection was okay, and it is. No, yours is fine. Okay. I, you know, uh, I just asked uh, Muhammad to try to connect from his phone and let's oh, see. Oh, okay, that sure. All right. <coughs> connect from his phone, let's see if that works better. Hi, Mohammed. Hello, Mohammed. Is he hear me? I can hear you perfect. Perfect. Oh my. <laughs> Thanks so much. Sorry about that. No, I know it's it's all right. I wonder if we should start again. I am sorry, but let, let's start again. All right. No problem. That way everybody has an opportunity to be heard, and, and it's really important that, that we do that. Okay. Yes. Sure. Sorry. So let's start again. Hi, welcome to Politics <laughs> NY with Sky, and I'm Stephen Witt filling in for Sky tonight. Schnepps Media is the only media outlet providing a platform for every single New York City <clears throat> Council candidate to have their voice heard and show their faces and personalities. This evening's debate is for the Queen City Council seat of District 24. It's nice to meet both of you. Today's Thank debate you. will be more like a discussion, which makes it fast and fun. Every time you speak, please keep your responses short and sweet so we can facilitate conversation. This fun and fast form is being recorded so you can watch it on politicsny.com and see all of your debates scheduled and recordings on politicsny.com backslash debate. So welcome District 24, which covers the neighborhoods of Kew Gardens Hills, Pomonic, Elect Chester, Fresh Meadows, Hillcrest, Jamaica Estates, Briarwood, Parkway Village, Jamaica Hills, and Jamaica. We're going to start tonight's discussion with each candidate introducing himself and telling why, telling me why you're the best person to represent the district in city government. We're starting again. Let's start with Mohammed. Hi, my name is Mohammed Uddin, and I'm an immigrant from Bangladesh, and I live in this district for 30 years. So I have a three children who all went to New York City Public School. Since I came to the United States, I was a community activist and community organizer, and public service has been an important part of my personal and professional life. In 2008, I became executive director of Alliance of South Asian American Labor, and 2011, I became a founding member of Bangladesh American Advocacy Group. I was a United Here Local 100 delegate. Also, I was a Demo Queens County Democrat Party's judicial delegate. Now I'm an alternate judicial delegate. As a member of Bag Asal, we will create a pilot program to serve halal and kosher food in New York City Public School. Bring Eid holiday in New York City Public School calendar and bring the religious guard bill, pass the religious guard bill for men, women, for all the religions. Also, we bring to the Bangla language access to the New York City and bring one of the largest senior center in Jamaica Muslim Center is a Muslim Dash Senior Center. As of all this organization I work and I achieve for this community for this issue. In this pandemic, I was one of the person to call all the elected officials regarding for my community issue. Call everyone, state senate, assembly, city council. Even I remember I was a good friend of my Rory Lansman. He helped me a lot for mask all this issue. So that's why I think so I need to represent for real, real represent for the community 
and I was the decide to run for this district to sort this people of this district. So thank, thank you so you much. Mohammed. Again, my name is Mohammed Uddin. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gennaro. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, my name is Jim Gennaro. I currently serve as the councilman representing the 24th district in Queens. I, I took office on February 18th after winning a special election in which I received 60.1% of the vote in an eight-way field. That was a, 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 a great mandate for me. And it's been my privilege to serve since taking uh, my seat in the council. Uh, I've been um, elevated to chair the Committee on Environmental Protection, which I previously chaired from 2002 to 2013. Now I'm back doing that same job in the council. I serve on eight other very important uh, committees. And in the eight or nine weeks I've been in office, I've um, uh, sponsored 21 pieces of legislation and 15 have uh, become law or on the way to getting the mayor's signature. Um, these were you know, negotiated bills, so they will be signed into law. <clears throat> and I've uh, also sponsored a host of other bills that are still going through the committee process. I was very pleased to, and I actually go back uh, with the uh, Jamaica Muslim Center back in the early 2000s when the, uh, when the Muslim Center wanted to um, expand, uh, wanted to expand. I worked with the Jamaica Muslim Center to make sure they got the um, expansion done. I was happy and proud uh, uh, to be able to do that. Uh, I was also happy and proud to be able to, to, uh, to put on the community board uh, uh, you know, two South Asian uh, uh, leaders in the community, as well as the head of the President's Association of the Pominock Houses. The Pominock Houses had no representation um, on the community board. I've made that happen. Uh, in the upcoming budget, I will be increasing the um, allocation for food pantries. It's a very great need. I'll be doing that. Uh, I'll be multiplying the current funding times five. Uh, and I'm very grateful for the support of many in the uh, uh, um, union community, uh, um, including uh, uh, GW Local 100 that uh, my opponent mentioned. I do have that support. Also, the, uh, the, the teachers, I have 1199, uh, 32BJ, DC 37, the Hotel Trades Council, uh, you know, Local 3, the uh, uh, Teamsters. I also have the support of the uh, you know, Stonewall Democratic Club, which is which which represents the LBGTQ plus community, and I have the League of Conservation Voters. I could go on and on. to get the idea. Thank I you. want to get down to have, uh, a, a substantive discussion. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Mr. Uden. Yes, sir. If elected, what would be the first thing you're going to work on? What What's your number one priority? My number one priority is for housing. Housing and economic too, but I'm saying to the housing why I say, because I never been tried to run for elected office office for my life. I never think about this thing. In pandemic, you know, the bring to, this is the more issue for me to when I put the food banking, food giving to the people house door to door, even day one, when this shutdown is like March or April, you know, only one person, even you can see my Facebook or Twitter, anything, I have to go people door to door. I went to the some house. And I see that in, in pandemic, like one, one bedroom, one closet, like look like one room is like one closet. People living like sharing to the condominium apartment or sharing the two, three group for same apartment. And people has so many concern about their issues. Some people, they are on the cupboard and they seek, they sleep on the hallway. And other people, you know, live on the room and they're sharing the bathroom and all these things. And I witness, I hear the so many people tell me same issue again and again. And I can see for myself to when I saw the people put their door. And this time I went to the NYCHA building for Pomonox, myself for door knocking. I went to the Kabul building, is near like Jewel Avenue or Parson on 164. I cannot even believe it's amazing. People leave this kind of apartment so small, their stair was tidy and there is not a fixed thing. And I think myself, I was helping all the elected officials for my life. I never take one penny or dime and they should represent the people to help those people that they need it. They don't have a, I'm talking about the, some people about the heating, their water. And they said, this is the way we are living. 
And I think this is the one of the great country and this great city. I love this city and this district because I give 20 years this district for voluntary work for my life. When I see my people living like this, I cannot accept it. I know some people live big house. They has like three bedroom, living room, dining room, kitchen. But in diversity community, people, if people are going to be busy with these people or relative house, you can see the house is crisis. So Thank if you. I elected, I make sure everybody live real house, whatever their issue is my issue. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Gennaro, what would be your number one priority? Yeah, I, 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 I think I have to agree with Mohammed regarding housing. Uh, uh, what, I, what I did when I first took office, uh, I met with some groups that were working with tenants that have been uh, uh, really hurt um, by the Zara landlords. Um, so we met with the good people from Chaya CDC and also you know, Catholic Migration Services with a view towards how we can empower tenants, people who already have places to live. And <clears throat> so there are two bills that I am you know, supporting in the, in the council that will give tenants a better right to council, meaning in legal representation. And in addition, in the coming budget, I will do what I did in, when I was a uh, um, councilman last time, is to uh, give funding to CUNY Law School because they provide a, uh, a, a legal clinic to, to represent people who are being discriminated against or being um, unfairly evicted and don't have access to an attorney and also people who are, um, uh, who, who are the victims of, you know, of, you know, of, of any kind of discrimination that don't have access uh, uh, to an attorney, and I was just at the Pominock Houses uh, yesterday, as I often am, uh, and I worked very closely with uh, Tamika Moore, uh, uh, who I put on the community board, who is the president of the Residents Association, and we have to make living conditions better for the people in Pominock and the other uh, uh, next developments that are in this district. I have the knowledge of the system to do that, although that does involve the state as well. I formerly worked for Governor Cuomo for six years, so I think I have the ability between my state experience, my previous council experience, and what I'm doing right now to create better living conditions for the people in the district. And just to add, um, anecdotally, I've lived in this district for 38 years. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uden. Yes, sir. Do you have a question for Mr. Gennaro? Yes, I have a one question because I know that Jim Gennaro long time ago and he's, well, he was my councilman, maybe he forgot me. I was helping him also in before Rory Lansman come. Yes, he's busy JMC, I saw him, you know, maybe he did not recognize my face. I know, but I understand that time and this time. And uh, because last time was the, uh, Rory Lansman is a, our councilman and now is a Jim Gennaro, is, thank you. It's a congratulation for him. He's elect for special election. And I hope he, I, we get something from him because in tomorrow, you know, you know that one of the biggest Eid Jamaat in the Muslim around the world, and we're living in the New York City. And we need something from in here from to the Jim Gennaro's. This tomorrow is a Eid. How is our Muslim are safeing and safe way to which we can go to the worship place to can practice you know, our prayer one. And second thing I ask him, then our district we live in, like so many I mentioned it before, like immigrant people, like South Asian people are living. And this is a overcrowded, over, you know, that we are so much behind for this thing. I wanna make sure my people know the mic, who is our councilman. If, if they can take care of our issue, our sanitation, they are not taking their one time their garbage, like, you know, our, or sometimes they have a- So a, let me get this straight, your, your, your first question, if, if I if I may, I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> um, well, I, I was, uh, you know, during my first uh, time in the council during those twelve years, <clears throat> um, I, I I did you know my utmost to empower in every possible way the Bangladeshi community to the point that I was known as the Bangladeshi councilman. Uh, I got more press in. Bangladesh regarding 
uh, my 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 um, interactions with the Bangladeshi community. I got more press on that in Bangladesh than I did here, <clears throat> and I thought that that was not appropriate that the Bangladeshi community be not represented <clears throat> or and not be uh, um, considered for the for the great asset they are. They are do this wonderful mosaic of New York City. So I sought to empower in every way people in the in, uh, um, in the Bangladeshi community. I, I appointed the first Bangladeshi woman to Community Board 8. <clears throat> I celebrated Bangladeshi Independence Day in uh, City Hall. And then when City Hall got closed down for a while, we did it at Borough Hall. And it was my intention to try to help in the best way I could to feature and highlight you know, the good works of all the community activists who are doing amazing things and to try to help that community um, into the political mainstream by being recognized at City Hall, by being recognized at Borough Hall, by being appointed to the community board. And when they need, and when, when there was a need, like with the expansion of the mosque, I was always there uh, um, against strong community, uh, against strong community opposition to the expansion of the mosque. I made sure it got done. I've always been available to the South Asian community, which is one of the reasons why I won the South Asian vote in the special election on February 2nd. I see. And do you have a question, Ms. Gennaro, for Mr. Uden? <clears throat> uh, no, I don't. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Thank you. Uh, let's go to an issue that's near and dear to me, which is senior citizens. Uh, how many uh, community centers are there for senior citizens and are they still closed due to the pandemic and will you work to get them open? Uh, most seniors are now vaccinated. And uh, let's start with Mr. Uden. Yes, uh, we think so we need to the open safety on your state or senior because you know why our city is a revenue problem. We almost 1.4 billion revenue problem and we have the debt like 1.125 billion. Mm -hmm. So we need to reopen our city and our state and our senior everything because we need to be safely. Mm -hmm. Because if I, we, if we cannot save our city and if we cannot save our all this issue because we face the problem to the, our revenue. How many senior centers are there in the district? Do either of you know? I have because look, this is the thank you for asking for me this question. I was my I, that's something mentioned before I mentioned to the I was whole life, even Mr. Jim Gennaro right here, I was helping to the all the elected official because I was a union member. Because our Muslim and our South Asian are they growing because I go so many senior center like Union Tanpai, all the senior center I busy because I work with the, not why I work, I work with the volunteer work with people like uh, John Lou, Rory Lansman, Assemblyman David, all this council or assembly my around here, I have to go with them, their senior center. But, and I saw that the senior, the senior people, they have, they have a food, they have exercise machine, all this and that. So I, one of the good fighters for the senior center, I asked the councilman Rory Lansman. Thanks God, he bring one of the largest Deshi senior center in Jamaica Muslim Center. We have a more than 150 senior, the people cannot walk. And this pandemic, Everybody get the food from to the their their center. So I know we have a lot, so many. I don't know. I, I cannot count it how many, but I'm saying one. Maybe we have like 10, 15 senior center in our, our district. So they have to be yes able to have to be open them because our elderly people population. I know some people has a luxury house. Some people has a small house. They never been outside. They never go go park. We need to bring them. We need to bring them together so we will be all have a you know in future better future. So that's why I'm going to support. Yes, we will be open for as soon as possible. Thank you, and Ms. Gennaro. <clears throat> yeah, I I, I, um, I would tend to agree. Uh, I was always a big booster of senior centers, a big funder of senior centers uh, all over the district. I see their vital importance, and but with regard to how fast they can open, you know, this is a question for the medical community and the health department. We have to do this safely. Most seniors are you know, vaccinated, but they are a very you know, vulnerable population. We have to make sure that we don't uh, go backwards as we try to go forward. <clears throat> and, but yes, when it is safe, they all must be open. Um, I, have, I have very considerable funding for all of the senior centers in the district. 
in, in uh, which is part of my um, discretionary funding. I also work closely with the uh, Department for the Aging, also known as DIFTA, <clears throat> uh, uh, to make sure that there's a combination of the funding that I provide from my discretionary uh, uh, pot, as we say, and we have to make sure that in the city budget, <clears throat> They are uh, adequately funded, and one and one thing that I do add to this equation, uh, I, I was a councilman for 12 years, was through 12 budget cycles when I was in the council, and then as council staff, I was through 13 budget cycles. So I have 25 25 budget cycles um, under my belt, so I will know how to navigate the budget uh, system, but. One more thing with regard to seniors, and it's critically important, and I was very, very big on this, the biggest one in the council on this, is that as, as good as it is for seniors to come together in a senior center uh, setting, we also have to make sure that we do not let up on meals on wheels. These people cannot get out of the house, and we have to make sure that they get that knock on the door every day to make sure that they're okay, that they get the food that they need for the day, and I was one of the biggest boosters of Meals on Wheels because that is a critical service to make sure that there is human interaction every day and just making sure that they're okay, just generally, as well as well-fed. And so we cannot forget the Meals on Wheels. It's critically important. Does Meals on Wheels in the Senior Center both serve a halal food? Do you know? No. Uh, I mean, well, they, they, they do like where it is appropriate to do so. I mean, I know, uh, you know, when I was... In the council, you know, the, 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 in you know, certain neighborhoods, you know, they had halal food. In other neighborhoods, they had kosher foods, and then they had the regular menu in the other centers. And so, it is important that we give people food that is uh, what they want. And in in this case, you know, um, halal versus kosher, like what they need to eat. Like they don't have any option other than to have that. And I will make sure that that happens, like I did. Uh, from 2002 to 2013. And Mr. Uden, do they, do you know that the senior centers provide halal food currently? Yeah, currently they're serving the halal food, yes. Because I'm before I mentioned, I was an advocate for halal and kosher food in New York City Public School. Because I was a big fighter for this thing, because not for me, I'm, I'm gonna fight for, I would fight for local leader to pass the, this bill, halal and kosher food in public school. Because you know why? And our senior center, because why I mentioned to the one of the senior center is the largest senior center. Because look, some senior, my father is nine, almost 90 years old, right? He cannot walk. He's on the, I have to help him to the walker. So think about the one year he's in the home. He never been outside, even doctor. If, if, you, if we have a doctor visit, some doctor they're doing the remote remotely. So I thank you to the agree with the Jim Gennaro is, is Yes, we all are openly safely for senior because I'm give, just give the one point. My father, he cannot walk. So think about so many people in this district, our district, same like my father age, they are home, they cannot walk. If we are all vaccinated and we all safe open and it's good for our senior, but I'm going for your topic one. Yes, that's, that's why we're saying to the so many senior center in this district. And I see the our district, the elderly population, they cannot go anywhere. They're gathering one place, that's why I'm a good fighter for senior, and I'm fighting for this issue again and again. And yes, we need some halal and kosher food, the senior center, so our senior can, our different religious faith, they can have their own food, and they can then enjoy their meal. Yes. So um, I'm, I'm just curious. Say I took the subway to the middle of your district, and I didn't know anything about it. Where would you tell me to go? Where would you say, Steve, you have to visit here or there? Name me three places that you would say, Steve, you've got to go there. I can say you can go for religious place first. If any, okay. any, any like middle of the thing, you're going to be like stuck or something. I say, hey, go for your worship and ask for your God for your help. Or if any other thing you need, I can provide you something else. But if Ooh. you are like, go ahead. I'm sorry. Where else? That's good. That's but one I'm saying, place. like, if you are like really like you are alone, you don't, you cannot do anything. But who can help you this world? Because now it's so much, so many discrimination, full of you know everywhere. So I can say, provide you, hey Steve, please go for worship, you know, pray your gods and ask for help. If any other issue, I say you can go there. I see. And Mr. Gennaro. Uh, well, uh, 
I'm kind of a like, like a bit of a foodie. I I I I, I like food, and if you uh, and if you want good halal food, as a uh, mom and well knows, you know, you go to Hillside Avenue, like right around uh, you know 168th or like 169th Street. If um, halal is your favor, uh, if you want kosher, then you go to uh, Main Street in Two Gardens Hills. And if you want to get away from it all, uh, you go to, to the south side of Flushing Meadow Park because that's in our district. Uh, so you go to Meadow Lake and uh, you know Willow Lake. I've spent hundreds of millions of dollars making sure that that uh, uh, that, that you know shoreline has been uh, 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 fully restored and is really. Nothing like walking around Meadow Lake. So I, I like to walk and I like to eat, and that's where I want to do it. Ah, very good. How how important is parkland in the district? And what would you do to increase parkland or or renovate it with capital dollars, Mr. Uden? Yes, because the parkland we need the important because I because I never been office. I tell mentioned it before, right? So I see this all this crisis is going on, and I need the parkland people as a suffering lot. So I have to be support there for this thing, their, their parkland issue, yeah. And Ms. Gennaro, you mentioned there's some improvements to the, the parkland. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, back when I was first in the council, I, I had a, um, uh, I did many, many parks projects. Back then the parks department was a little bit better about moving the projects forward. Now they take years to move forward and that's a problem. And like the price tags of, like, like the price tag used to be, something that was affordable to a councilman with her or his discretionary budget. Now, in order to get a parks, to, a, a, a parks project to happen, you know, you have to partner with the borough president for funding. I have to partner with the speaker for funding. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, this year in the budget, uh, we're putting in, you know, God willing, I like, you know, the budget hasn't passed yet. Uh, we're putting in uh 4.3 million dollars into Capitilly Park, which is uh, in a you know right uh, in the uh, Jamaica Hill community, uh, which serves the South Asian community. Uh, and there is a feature in that park, which is which is, which is Boots Pond. And speaking as a geologist and um, environmental scientist, that pond is a remnant from the glacial era. It's what we call a kettle pond, and so. I've done millions of dollars of renovations to that park um, over the years, and this this next renovation will be to um, aerate the water so that it's clear and better able to sustain life, as well as you know redoing the shoreline and the comfort station. So we've got over four million dollars going to that park, and uh, I, I I have parks as I have park departments list. You know, I will do as many of those projects or, or at least try to get them started by giving some seed money. And then we give a little money the next year, a little money the next year. God willing, I'm in office. Uh, but and but I, 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 I you know, uh, you, you, there is a limit to my patience. Like the parks department has to show me that they're going to be able to you know, complete the projects um, in a timely way. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to have to take it up with the mayor. And so um uh, it's important that these projects move. So if anyone from the Parks Department is listening, I love you, but we have to move the projects fast. Excellent. Do you have a comment I, on that, Mr. Yes, Eden? I have a question, yes. Because remember, I, I mentioned you, I never, I, I, I support the park plan because I, I never been in the public office. Uh, thank you so much for uh, Jim Gennaro for mention for my neighbors, Captain Telly Park. Since I come this community like 30 years ago, I see the same park as it today. I was a, one of the big fighter of the councilman Rory Lance and he was my good friend. I spoke to him, even Melinda Cards when she was a borough president. For issue on the Captain Telly Park is one of the South Asian bribing community right here on the corner. And there has a pond is right there. His water is so filthy, so dirty. You can even amazing. Children love to this park, go to the park for like tourists. They go want to see the park. Before we have a beauty of this park, like when I come in here, like about 92, something like this, I see this park. There has a beauty of this park. There's a nice pond. Now immigrants are grown up, the overcrowded people. This park come in one of the dirty and filthy. So thanks God, Councilman Rory Lansman. He bring about two, three years ago, some renovation and is not fully done. 
that's why I'm saying, if I will be elected, it not in the Captain Telly Park, in my district, where we're living, every park has a suitable park to our people can visit because we're living one of the great country in the world and a great city on the world. And one of the best district in District 24. If you see, if you look, I'm, I'm gonna thank you so much to mention the Jim Gennaro, bring this park issue. We need to this park, do it, this park to fix it. Our pond is, is, is like, look like I'm saying third world country's pond. We need to the park right here is the beauty of the corner. The people can enjoy their tea, coffee and the, the vacation this park. So thank you so much. This is my planning number one. And I have to, that's what I'm saying. If I'm gonna be elected, I make sure in the district 24 or citywide, park has to be a park. Even we come in from back home, we can see the beautiful park. But we, we living in the great country of the district, our park is not. So we need to be, yes, that's why I'm saying, thank you again for this is for Jim Jenner's remark for this park. And I, I actually need to, uh, need to reply to that because in the 12 years that I was in office and Morton Pavman before me, he was the first one to put um, aeration devices into the water to make sure that the water was sufficiently oxygenated and the reason why, the, and I can speak to this as a geologist, you know, the reason why the water tends to turn, uh, you know, full of algae and also brown is because there is insufficient oxygen in the water because of the, I don't want to get too scientific, but there's a lot of nutrient that runs into the water that causes the algae to bloom. When the algae decomposes, it takes all of the oxygen out of the water. So, so um, Councilman Popman put the aeration system in, and I did several multi-million dollar improvements to that park uh, while I was in office, but now it needs more attention, which is why I'm putting over $4 million into that park in this cycle. I see. Moving on, let, let's talk a little bit about the recovery and the budget. If a city council member we, we have to think about a, a budget, it was increased, it's a very large budget. And, and one thing a lot of people around the city are saying, defund the police. And uh, would you like to address public safety, both in, within the district and then within the greater city? Um, I'll start with uh, Mr. Uden again, so we can go back and forth. Okay, because I never support defunding police, either pro funding for police, because you know why? So I'm, I'm gonna mention again, since I come this country, I was a community organizer and a community activist. And I see now to 20 or 30 years ago in Jamaica Hill, maybe Jim Gennaro, no, he was, a, he was a city councilman before 12 years ago. Our district was like, mostly like people robbery or something like this. I was attack myself so many times because I'm not like, six foot or something, I about like five foot something. So I'm a very small guy, you know what I mean? But so, you're tough, I'm sure. <laughs> right, so I'm a fighter because I can fight for my community. Only right. thing my issue. Right. So only thing I see in my eye, if you need to help, you need to the police officer, you need the law informants. So I was going to 107 counseling every Tuesday on the month, about 10 years. After COVID we stopped, we never been. I have a very good relationship with the NYPD staff in everywhere, not like a friendly, as an activist to work in the community. If you leave the community because this NYPD, they're helping our community so much. Anything we need, they are top of us. If we don't help them, if we don't need to the real police, I know that police officer they has a bad, they has a good or bad police, but if you have to do something, you need to the justice for all. But we need to the, our strong police officer our strong you know nypd so we can all safe in living in the neighborhood because if you don't have a neighbor good police or good like you know law enforcement you have to be attacked on the street subway everything like guy like me hey maybe i'm on the defund the police is good for fifth avenue park avenue but not like living in the jamaica hill in this area so we need to the proper funding for them whatever they need it but i only pro supporter for them and they help our community and I need to support, everybody support them. That's all I say. Excuse me, one minute. I'm just looking at, uh, at something and we have Timothy Rosen who's also running and he responded 
And I don't know how to add. I don't know who he is. In the I don't know. He, he, he's not running in this district. Oh, he's not. Not no. as a Republican? Uh, I mean, I don't know who the Republican candidates are, but this is a debate for the Democratic primary, is it not? We, but we're inviting all the candidates because it's a primary for everybody. And I'm not. I'm but he has no primary. That. He has no primary. He has a doubt. Well, we want to give a voice to everybody. And what about Matthew Malloy? Is he a candidate? Uh, no, he's my campaign manager. Oh, OK. Gotcha. Excuse yeah. me, gentlemen. Um, I will just reply. Um, Sorry about that. Um, Mr. Gennaro, did you talk yeah. about the police and the defunding police? Yeah, sure. I, 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 uh, uh, um, I think that I think that Muhammad is absolutely right. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the whole notion of defunding the police is absolutely silly and it hurts those parts of this district and of this city that are most afflicted by crime. And so um, I'm all ears when it comes to police reform, and I've been active on that issue. But when it comes to you know fully funding the police, the police that's what has to happen. I do have some I, I, I do I do have some numbers here that going from uh, you know March of two of 2019 to March of 2021, which is a latest month. Uh, that they are uh, that that this information is available from 2019 to to, to, to 2021. Uh, you know, March 19 to 2019, March 2021. We have murder up 62 percent, rape up 16 percent. This is citywide. We have burglary up 23 percent. Uh, you know, uh, 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 grand Laura city auto up 84 percent. Uh, you know, shooting incidents up 77 percent. This is completely unacceptable. And so any, you know, unfortunately, the city's budget, you know, the, the, well, we had the preliminary budget, we had the executive budget, the council made its response, you know, to the preliminary budget, and now we have the executive budget, and I'll be having a budget hearing of, of, of my committee next week. Um, but there was nothing about police defunding, uh, you know, in this budget, and that's a good thing. And, you know, using, you know, my, uh, you know, knowledge of the budget process and my, you know, relationship with the speaker, my relationship with the chair of the finance committee, my relationship with, with the mayor, people can, you know, rest assured that this budget will not have anything about, you know, defunding police. Now, in terms of, of me, you know, having a, you know, relationship with the police, I was endorsed by the PBA, uh, you know, in, in the uh, 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 special election. I, I, I've always had a wonderful relationship uh, um, with the police department, but, you know, we have to be, you know, but... They have to be fair, and uh, uh, you know, next meeting, uh, next week, I just schedule a meeting uh, with our you know local DA, uh, Melinda Katz, to go over issues with her um, because there's two very important parts of the criminal justice system. We can't really talk about the police without talking about the DAs, and so um, and, uh, and 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 particularly now that the city is dealing with. You know, the you know, results of bail reform, which they did at the state level, it makes it you know, you know all the more you know, important for the city to stay on its toes and to you know make sure that you know we fully fund the police department, uh, but we do it in a fair and just way and make sure that policing is fair and just. Uh, and I think that is um, exemplified by the police reform package that the council just passed, and many of those bills I was uh, um, happy to co-sponsor. And thank you. Uh, speaking of budgeting, uh, Ms. Gennaro, do you believe in participatory budgeting where part of your capital funds, you will give an opportunity to constituents to get together and pick what kind of funding can be made within the district? No, I don't. I don't. And here's why. You, 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 know, you probably want to know why, because that sounds very democratic. <laughs> it's exactly the opposite. Um, <clears throat> now, when it, comes to when it comes to participatory budgeting, the people who ordinarily get involved in that are the people who are part of the civic and political culture who go to civic meetings, who are on the boards of, 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 of civics. They're very, very hyper involved. And what happens when you have participatory budgeting, and I'll defend this against anyone, is that you know there becomes a tendency 
for the people who are on the inside to 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 determine like where the funding's going to go. And so, if we're going to participatory budgeting, I tell you right now, uh, you know, PS eighty two, you know, PS one eighty two, uh, you know, South of Hillside, like you know, you, you, they wouldn't get a dime. And like where there is the greatest need, there's there is very often people who are not wired into any kind of civic. Like they don't go to civic meetings because they're working twelve hours a day and they're you know trying to get by. You know, they wouldn't know about the process. They wouldn't be able to participate in it. And so it's so people elect me or they're going to elect Muhammad or they're going to elect, uh, you know, someone to fill the seat. And it, it, it's my job or it's Muhammad's job or it's whoever is holding, you know, this seat to make decisions. Like, that's why we were elected. Now, many politicians like participatory budgeting because they get to satisfy the inside crowd, the people like where all the votes are. And so, so when you have that, the money tends to flow like where the votes are, but the way I do it, the money flows to where the need is. And I think, you know, when you have participatory budgeting, you turn that paradigm on its head and people and, and places in the district that need money don't get it. And that is a great way, participatory budgeting, in my opinion, for politicians to cash in on votes. And that's not what budgeting is supposed to be about. It's about the money goes where the need is, not where the votes are. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uden, would you like to con uh, comment about participatory budgeting? Yes, because uh, thank you. And also I got a thanks to Jim Gineros because he has a more experience than might be maybe me because for participant budget because I never involve all this thing. But only thing I share is the democracy, I share it. If like participatory budget, if someone in the like in negotiate with them, like if I need something and then it's something, so we can do, you know, like uh, what they call uh, the share because whatever I need it, I, I can give it to from them. And if I if I don't need something, I give it to them. So I can look like I can get like you know, like he need, does my neighbor or my some other constituent they need something for like this budget, and I don't need for this fill that one. So I can say, hey, you can give it to me that one. I can fulfill my this one, and you can take my my whatever the my participatory budget. You can take like like near, uh, what they call is like uh, you know sharing to the the budget, yeah. I see. Uh, before, um, we're going to have closing comments. Before we do that, is it still Ramadan, uh, Mr. Uden? This is the in ending the Ramadan today, the last day of the Ramadan. Oh, so well, tomorrow thank you for joining in us, and may thank you have a blessed Ramadan. And, and thank you so I, much. I know it's you know a long holiday. So Eid is tonight or tomorrow night? The tomorrow. Night. Mo yeah, tomorrow Eid. Okay. So, so we so have not... Go ahead. No, I just want to, you know, many blessings to you on this Ramadan. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And and with that, um, I'll give you a minute or two to to make your pitch why people should vote for you and uh, and a closing argument. For me? Yes, for Mr. Uden. We'll yeah, start. because they vote for me because they know I'm an active and organizer community community activist and community organizer. Because my plan is by today. You see, mentioned for early for about um, the eighth. So we have a 168, they has a like Eid celebrate. It's Bangladeshi called Chad Rat. Maybe it's like, like good night, something like this. So we, I'm a, one of the organizers in this event today because I love to be the participate all kinds of this event. So as a community activist, community organizer, I love beauty in, in my community. And I think so when the people need something, I always knocking for their door. Even is not my capacity, whatever the elected official in this district or New York City. I have to call them. Some of them give me their personal number. I call them or I text them. This is the me. I'm an advocate for my community, like affordable housing, immigration rights, arts and park, better public transportation. That's why I'm working for in so long. I'm running because our park system is filthy. Our hillside, if you want to come visit today, like seven, eight, nine o'clock, you can see, you cannot even walk this hillside avenue, south side of the hillside avenue. In, 188th Street to, I believe it's Queens Boulevard, right there. People is a traffic because they don't have a no representative. People ask, come to me, hey, Mohammed, what I can do for, what, I, what is this for? So people are going to be boost me. That's why I'm planning to run for this district because our district is a, is a desired district. It's a transit desired. People are going to be, they are like every day they're facing the traveling because we before mentioned to the one of the guy coming the last week for me. 
somebody stealing his the iPhone. Then he come back the store, he slashed his window, he break everything, and then he put the knife in there. They call police, police come, whatever they do it. But the reason I'm running, I'm a community advocate. I want to love this district because this district gave me so much and I want to give them back. Mm -hmm. So anyway, my name is Mohammed Uddin. I don't want to take your time as a community activist. I want to run this district and I want to see this district as a beautiful district we live in, but I have to give the chance for, for you guys. But thank you anyway. <laughs> thank you. And Mr. Gennaro. Sure. Uh, um, first of all, I, I, I... I, I want to thank you, Steve, and you know, the, and 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 the um, Schnapps, uh, yeah, and the people from uh, Schnapps for putting this on. Uh, I I want to salute my opponent, uh, um, Mohammed Udin, who is a, a a great community organizer, a wonderful guy who lives in his heart, and uh, you know, does so much for the community. I wish him uh, uh, Eid Mubarak. Thank you. <clears throat> and and. Um, and and I, I'm 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 glad you mentioned about the uh, about like the 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 the, the uh, uh, streets that are unclean. Uh, one thing that I did when I was in, I'm a big like litter basket clean guy. And in the upcoming budget, <clears throat> we're only adding nine million dollars for for in order to um, increase litter basket collection. And nine million dollars citywide is not going to go a long way. So what I have to do, which I'm in the process of doing, that which I did from 2002 to 2013, uh, uh, I hired this organization known as the Doe Fund, um, which are your formerly homeless, formerly drug addicted, formerly, uh, um, uh, formerly um, um, incarcerated folks who get hired by the Doe Fund, uh, who have to follow very, very strict standards, I had them on every major boulevard in the in, in the district, and they service the baskets, and they make sure that they 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 bag the stuff up and they put it next to the basket. Uh, I know I'm spending a lot of time on you know talking about clean streets, but it's really really important because the streets are dirty. Yeah, and so so you know, so you know when you go to Main Street, when you go to Hillside Avenue, when you go to Union Turnpike, when you go to the stretch of Queens Boulevard uh, along Broadway, I'm gonna have no fun. Uh, you know, making sure those litter baskets are serviced, and all the major boulevards in in, in this in, in this district, like they were from 2002 to 2013, will be as clean as Main Street Disneyland. And you can print that in your paper. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. You. I want to thank you both, uh, Mohammed Udin and James Gennaro. You've been watching and listening, hopefully, to Politics NY with Sky. I'm filling in with her. My name's Stephen Witt. I'm the political editor-in-chief for Politics NY. And we're from Schneps Media, which is the only media outlet providing a platform for every single New York City Council candidate to have their voice heard and show their faces and personalities. This evening's debate that you just watched was for Queens Council, City Council seat, District 24. Um, it, it, it was a very fun conversation and I wanna thank you both. Anybody that would like to watch this debate, it has been, uh, it has been a fast, fun debate. And uh, if you wanna watch it, it was recorded. You can do so on politicsny.com and see all of our debates and scheduled recordings on politicsny.com backslash debates. And I thank you both and- Mohammed. How about yes. you and me give Steve a round of applause? What do you say to that? How about that? Thank, oh, thank you. <laughs> and I give you guys. G Have a very Ginger, good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, audience. You know, because thank you so much for this event. Thank God you. bless. God thank bless. you all. Take care now. Thank you. Appreciate you it. Bet. Nice to meet you. Bet. Thank I'll you. see you. I'll see you around. Take all care. Right. Absolutely. Come come back to come come tonight. So we can celebrate together. Hey, we can I, give five votes. Okay. Um, I'm going to knock on doors now. <laughs> I'll try to make it. I have. I live in a large Bangladeshi community. Maybe I'll go. I know. Yeah, 168 in Hillside. You come in here and you're going to get fun today. Okay. Thank okay. you. Let's Sounds go now. Good. All right. Thank you.